Hey, how you doing? This is RJ. I'm going to tell you right off the bat, I don't expect this video to do very well. I'm not actually expecting much of it at all. But uh, I wanted to put this video out there just because I'm always looking for answers to my questions. And a few people have asked this question just randomly, not of me. So I thought I'd throw in what I have for knowledge on the answer to this question. Now, to do that, I'm going to give you a little bit of background just as of myself, just to show you that I'm not really talking out of my hat, okay? Um, and uh, hopefully it, I don't sound pompous because I'm, that's not my intent at all. But uh, if you've followed any of my videos and listened to them, you know that I have spent a fair number of years pursuing various degrees. Um, the one that I pursued the most for several degrees was political science, and uh, I concentrated on political theory. And when you learn about political theory, you learn about a lot about the history of ideas. Um, and I also have a degree in history as well. So I like the history of ideas and intellectual history, where ideas come from. So why I'm talking about this is because the new concepts for the Netflix Shira have come out. And everybody who is not left of center is just looking at it going, why is this happening? Why? Because they're looking at this new Shira and they're asking the same questions they asked when Marvel turned Carol Danvers into Carl Manvers. So basically what happened, if you don't know either of those two or what's going on, I'll give you a brief uh, brief overview, is that both of these characters, both Carol Danvers and She-Ra, um, they were very powerful women, but they were also very womanly women. They were the epitome, especially you look at Carol Danvers in the comics, she was very curvy. Uh, she looked like a woman. She dressed, well, basically her uniform used to be uh, what uh, looked like a one-piece bathing suit, except it had gloves and boots. Uh, and they accentuated her features, and she had long, flowing um, blonde hair. Okay, and the same was with Shira. Now, Shira, when it originally came out, it was a little bit after me, but, you know, at the very least, I lived through it. And Jira was the same. And they've taken these two characters now and turned them basically into men. They still have, they are still female in name, but they've turned them into men. They look like men, and there's no distinguishing if just looking at the visuals between these characters as they exist now and a man. Even though they used to be these very feminine characters and they were strong characters though even though they were very feminine they were strong characters but at the same time they exercised their characteristics as females not just bodily not just in visuals but also in other ways being compassionate things like this you know just plain old falling in love with some guy these were the kind of things that happened both in the comics and in the shows for Shira, because, you know, I did know kids that were watching Shira at the time. It was all over the place. But anyways, so a lot of people are asking the question, why does this happen? Why do you have these SJWs who keep on saying we need more powerful women role models for children and when they actually get a chance to make a powerful female role model for them, they take this established character who is a powerful character, who is strong, and who is also female. And they take that character who's established and basically turn them into a man. Why do they do that? And a lot of people don't really understand why in the world SJWs or people, far left people do this. They keep on crying for more women and when they get more women, they turn them into a man. Now, 
And the reason why I don't expect this video to do well is because from here on out, I'm going to be talking about the history of ideas and philosophy and a few things like that to just answer this question because the answer to this question is fairly long and complicated. But there is an actual answer to that question. So I could go back, I could go back to ancient times to answer this question, but I'm not. I could go back easily 500 years and delve into what the answer to this question is, but I'm not. So I'll just go back roughly about 100 years. Let's let's say 150. Okay, so we're talking not too long before the First World War. All right, so we'll go back to 1850s sort of time. Now, if you look at society today, we live in basically what people would call an immoral culture, not an amoral culture, an immoral culture. The, the specific way that it's referred to by many intellectuals today is we live in a neo-pagan society. We don't live in a Judeo-Christian society anymore, not in North America, not in Europe. We live in a neo-pagan society. And how did this come about? Well, again, I'll just go over how it came about for about the last eh, little more than 100 years, really quickly. And most of the ideas that set up this immoral culture basically came from one source, which would be Friedrich Nietzsche. And everybody's heard of Nietzsche before, but not many people have probably heard about his role model, his mentor, we'll say, his precursor, which would be Arthur Schopenhauer. So you have these two men. You have a mentor and a student. Mostly people remember the student who is Nietzsche. And basically what they did was, um, if you're, you want my just honest take on it, they wanted to live an immoral life. Both of these men wanted to live an immoral life. So they basically each came up with a philosophy that would allow them to act as immoral as possible. And they weren't the only ones at this time doing these things, plenty of others, but that's what they were doing. And there's the ones that stuck. And if you look at their philosophy, basically they take everything that you and I as a normal person would think of as moral and call it immoral and everything that you and I would t think of as immoral and call it moral. So things like believing in God or going to church or being good to your neighbor or, you know, volunteering your time, all those things to these people and their philosophy would be immoral. Whereas in their eyes, um, you know, hurting a person because they hurt you, uh, war, strife, just straight up murder even. These are moral things for them in their philosophy. They are easily moral things. So they wanted to act as immoral as possible. So they came up with these immoral philosophies to justify how they would act this way. But besides that, there was one thing that each of these men hated more than morality. And this thing that each of these two men hated more than morality was women. They hated women. They hated women with a fiery passion that you will never really see focused on anything if you just go out and live your life. They hated women with a fiery passion. And each of these men made that hatred of women part and parcel of their philosophies. They just baked it right in and made it intertwined so much with their philosophies that you could not separate those two things. And when I say they hated women, I don't mean that they beat their wives or anything like that. I mean, each of these men saw women as less than subhuman. They thought of women as the slime of the earth. That's exactly how they would describe them. They were the slime out of which men were born. In their philosophies, in their point of view, that's what women were. They were less than slime. And we should just use them as that slime to procreate and make men. And that repulsive use of them to even use them would be repulsive. So that's how much they hated women. And there were things in their texts that they wanted to publish in their philosophies that people back in the 1800s, their publishers said, no, we are not going to publish that. 
that's going too far. And this is a society which didn't think a whole lot about women, you know, and being genteel towards their feelings or anything like that. So they hated women. And some people sort of try to justify it in the fact that, well, look, here you have these men and they're trying to make this philosophy, which is basically be immoral, act according to whatever you want to do. You know, hatred is a good thing. Strife is a good thing. War is a good thing. And all of these things get con get contradicted by women. Women's natural empathy would say, hey, listen, we should um, just stop and think about this for a minute because women naturally are very compassionate and they would usually put the brakes on this kind of thing, right? So they try to justify it sort of like as a mental logic puzzle and justify it that way. But honestly, the reason why these two men hated women so much, you can see it if you actually know their history and we have good records of what their lives looked like. And there's very good reason why they hated women. Um, neither of these two men grew up with a father. Uh, both of these two men grew up only in female households and they lived with these women and learned to hate them. Uh, and let's see, Schopenhauer at one point, well, his mother tried to kill him at one point. So, you know, that was a great relationship there. You can see why he learned to hate his mother. Uh, I think I think the story that I remember the most was um, him and his mother were having an argument one time about who was the better professor, and since he sort of won the argument, she tried to throw him down a flight of stairs in order to kill him. So yeah, great mother-son relationship there, and he had no father. And whereas Nietzsche, uh, he thought he, is, he was raised by his mother and his aunts and his sisters, basically, and he came to hate them because he said that they... I mean, he's, he was a German, right? He, he used to go out and look at the Prussian army, go marching by and want to be part of that. And he hated his, his female family members for stripping him of his masculinity because later on he tried to join the army and they said, no, sorry, fella, you are too weak. You cannot join the army. You're ridiculous. Go away. So he volunteered to be a stretcher bearer and he lasted, I think it was about two weeks on the battlefield when they had to take him off and tell him just go away because he couldn't stand the sight of blood, which is fairly ridiculous since the, one of the key points of his entire philosophy is that every man should be at war with every other man at every moment of every time, no matter what, you know, and he couldn't even stand the sight of blood. So he resented them these women in his life for stripping him of his masculinity. So both of these men hated their mothers and all the women in their life. And it just shows out in their philosophy. Now, to get to the real point of this, the real point of this is that they wanted to act immorally and they came up with these philosophies to act immorally. And when you start putting these philosophies out there, if you know anything about the world, there's going to be plenty of people out there who are going to glom onto them and say, hey, yeah, I want to act immorally too. Let's have more of that, which they did because their philosophies took off because there are always people who want to act immorally to justify whatever they can do and do it. But the problem was this. There was a lot of women and they were also intellectuals at this time. And they looked at this and they were excluded from it. Now, I want to say this right off the bat so that everyone understands this. Women could have put the brakes on this right then and there because they have done so in other areas of the past of history. They have seen things like this come out and they just stepped right up and said, hey, no, we're not doing this. We're stopping putting an end to this right now. Uh, the one that comes to mind most... Um, Readily would be the cult of Mithra, but that's going way back in history, so I'm not going to go into that. But they have stopped these things. Women, in their just natural ability to be good human beings, have put a stop to this. But in this instance, they did not. In this instance, they actually just looked at the men who are acting as immoral as possible and said, hey, how can we get some of that ourselves? Because women just wanted to join in with the immorality. But the problem was, they couldn't be Nietzschean. They couldn't follow Schopenhauer. Why? Because those two philosophies 
excluded women because of the pure hatred of women that was just part and parcel of those philosophies. So women had to come up, women, women intellectuals had to come up with a way for them to be Nietzschean without being pure Nietzscheans, because a, a woman cannot be a pure Nietzschean. Just can't. If you looked at how much hatred there is of women in there, if you're a woman and you try to live out that philosophy, you ju you just can't. It, it excludes you. So the, the intellectual women had to find a way to make women a philosophy in which they could act the same way and be Nietzschean so that they could be Nietzschean, but still be women. And, you know, this comes out in a lot of different ways in um, thinkers like Simone de Beauvier, uh, you know, who was basically one of the creators of feminism. And this is where feminism started to take root. And this is where it comes from, the modern idea of feminism. This is these are the, the birth origins of it in these ideas. So they come up with two ideas, these intellectual women. They came up with two ideas. Well, idea number one was how can we make women into men? And number two, how can we erase any differences between men and women at all? Any of those two things sound familiar in today's culture? So basically, they had to erase any try to erase any difference between men and women at all, because if you're going to make women into men, well, you're going to have to lower the bar of what a man is, because just, you know, physically look at it, and um, a woman is so physically different, radically different than a man, and that to make a woman into a man, you're only looking at a very low-level man, we'll say. So they had to lower the bar. And so they lowered that bar by trying to erase any differences between man and woman. Now, again, I'll say right again here, um, to be clear, equal does not mean the same. What they wanted to do was erase all differences so that men and women were the same or perceived as the same. The same and equal are not the same thing. Equal is an ancient Greek word. It means balanced. You know, you have a scales. In one side you have lead, and the other side you have gold. Just because the scales are balanced doesn't mean you have gold on both sides. Doesn't mean you have lead on both sides. Again, the way I usually think about it is, or tell people about it is that 2 plus 3 equals 5. 4 plus 1 equals 5. 2 plus 3 equals 4 plus 1. But those two equations are not the same. They are two different equations, even though they are equal. Men are 2 plus 3. Women are 4 plus 1. So, men and women can be equal, but they're not the same. But they want to erase all of these differences so that there is no way to perceive the differences between men and women. So that you can change women into men, at the very least into that low category of man, so that when you change the woman into a man, then they can be a Nietzschean. And once they are Nietzschean, then they can live as immorally as their male counterparts do. Pure and simple. This is the history of these ideas. So, that's also the history of feminism. So people are wondering why, when you get feminists out there and they want these role models for girls, role models for women, why they have to change them into men? Well, this is why because it's just straight up part and parcel of how feminism was developed over the last 100 years. You take a woman and you change her into a man. That's what feminism has as part of its roots, because it all goes back to Nietzsche. And that's what happens whenever these SJWs or far leftists get a hold of any kind of power and want to publish or create something with a strong female character. They don't actually make a female character. They change a female character into a man, in all but name only. This is the history of these ideas. This is where 
these ideas come from. This is why these people do this. They probably don't even realize why they're doing it. I'm pretty sure that they don't realize why they're doing it. Because, of course, as I always say, SJWs and the like, they're just useful idiots for other people who are trying to socially engineer societies. But yeah, that's the answer to the question. Why do they do this? Why can't you have a strong female lead in a comic, in a show that actually looks like a female and acts like a female? Because it's contrary to the very basic ideas that constitute feminism and where it came from. I just had to get that out so that maybe next time you see it happening, you can understand what's going on. Anyways, not a short video. I thought it was going to be a short video, not a short video, and not a video that is focused on comics at all. But I put it out there. Again, don't expect it to do well, but I wanted to make it part of my channel. All right. I'll see you later. Bye.